President Barack Obama made history by becoming the first serving U.S. head of state to visit Cuba in nearly 90 years. But he's not the only American who's made a lasting impression on Cubans. CCTV Sean Calebs has the story of another larger-than-life personality whose time in Cuba has not been forgotten. The punishing U.S. economic embargo has taken its toll on the Cuban people, as well as the country's effort to preserve its rich history. Thank you. From 1939 until 1960, the small village of San Francisco de Paolo, just outside of Havana, was home to Ernest Hemingway, journalist, author, military veteran, and someone this nation proudly embraces. Hemingway is part of the Cuban culture. Maybe you can find a, little, a, a lot of people that they, they never had read Hemingway works. But if you ask them about Hemingway, yes, of course. From 1980 until 1997, Gladys Rodriguez was the director of the Hemingway Museum, which is simply the writer's old house, unrestored, off the beaten path, and exactly the way Hemingway left it in 1960. The American blockade has kept U.S. preservation specialists and American money from coming to Cuba in an effort to make sure Hemingway's memory is not washed away by time. <coughs> Hemingway wrote, Islands in the Stream, and perhaps most famously, Old Man and the Sea while living in Cuba. He was inspired by stories from people in the fishing village of Coimar. A lifelong scholar of Hemingway's work, Rodriguez says the author was constantly at war with the critics and has her own thoughts on the symbolism of Old Man and the Sea. I think that the, the, the sharks are the critics and I thought that the, the skeleton of the Merlin is his own literature, his work. This is one of Hemingway's favorite haunts in the seaside town of Coimar. Aside from writing, Hemingway loved to drink. Today, busloads of tourists, like these people from France, crowd the narrow streets to peek into Terrazas de Coimar. When Ernest Hemingway wanted a daiquiri, he would often come here, to the Floridita, in the heart of Havana. Hemingway had a long-time love affair with this nation and bonded with his country's citizens. As the U.S. eases economic sanctions, more and more visitors from the north are coming down and crowding into the Floridita. Today, locals say it is little more than a tourist trap, something that would probably have Hemingway rolling over in his grave. It's called the Old Man and the Sea Hotel, in horrible disrepair at the rundown Hemingway Marina just north of Havana. Here you can find boats flying the U.S. flag. And with the thaw in relations, more than anything, Rodriguez hopes U.S. support and money to preserve everything Hemingway will soon follow. We are a hope people, hopeful people. And um, I think that maybe. Because just like the Marlin in the book, Hemingway's history is being eaten away by time and the elements. And once gone, can never be replaced. Sean Caleb, CCTV, Havana, Cuba.